It's a great looking church, isn't it? Hi everyone, welcome to another edition. It's not really an edition, is it? It's more of an episode. I should probably say episode from now on. So, welcome to another episode of Coffee with Father James. And those of you diehards, veteran Coffee with Father James watchers will recognize the original mug, the very first mug. Uh, it's the Gary Larson Farside uh, Aerobics in Hell mug. And we used this mug uh, the first month or so. Uh, uh, for these videos. And, and when I look at this mug, it, it kind of reminds me of aerobics in hell uh, for some reason. And, and the, some of the initial struggles that, that, that happened when, when I first came to the parish, which more often than not ended up with people being mad at me for some reason, or deserved or undeserved. <laughs> and so I looked at my, my, uh, my bookshelf with all the mugs and I thought, I think today I need Gary Larson, because guess what? I'm going to tell you something in this video that might make you mad, or at least some of you, potentially. Anyway, I should probably drink some of this first. And if you're having, I hope you're having a coffee too, you know. This is, you know, coffee with Father James. I hope you're having a cup, so enjoy your cup as well. I'm here in St. Peter's Church. You can see behind me the beautiful Pentecost window, the Holy Spirit coming down on, 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 on the apostles and uh, and our Blessed Mother and bringing life. You see the, the, uh, the holes in the ceiling coming down. It's, it's a beautiful uh, window. It's a beautiful church. I, I, love, I love this building. And I want to talk to you today about the most important activity that happens in this building. Of course, it's the celebration of the Eucharist. We have currently four celebrations of Sunday Eucharist in, in this place. You also know that we've come through a lot over the last two years. Uh, it's, we've come through the parish merger, which has been deeply challenging to, for many of us. Uh, it's challenged our sense of identity, our sense of purpose, what it means to be parish. And we've also come through the pandemic. I say come through the pandemic fully aware that we're presently learning to live with COVID and many are still struggling with that. It's still a source of anxiety and stress for, for some. And, and legitimate health concern, and we, we continue to respect that and acknowledge that. But the pandemic as pandemic is over. I remember when the pandemic first started uh, asking the question or hearing others ask the question, is this pause that we're experiencing on normality, is, is, it, uh, is it merely an interruption or is there something else going on? And my own conviction and the convictions of, of others was that this is no mere interruption i.e. that you know, when it's over, things will go back to normal. This is disruption. This is something being altered at the core of who we are. And when this pandemic is over, it's not going back to normal. A lot of things will have fundamentally have changed. And that is the case with regard to church attendance. Now, uh, across different churches, different parishes, different uh, Christian traditions, we see that anywhere between uh, 40 and, and 20 percent of, of people who previously went to church uh, on a weekly basis no longer attend and some of them no longer even watch online. So there was a real disruption there. We've been, you know, gradually increasing our numbers in the weekends here at a four masses through the summer. We, in the summer we hit uh, attendance, an average of attendance of about 450 through, throughout the summer. And it was a sense that let's wait and see what happens in the fall. Surely by uh, the middle of October, we'll have a sense of what the new normal will be with regard to Sunday attendance. Now, that's one metric. We count Sunday attendance for every single Mass every single week. I want to show you some statistics. Uh, I'm going to put my coffee down. Uh, I made some st statistics for you, and I want to show you this graph. This, this first one shows the attendance since June 5th. And, and you see the bump that happens at the beginning of September, it's a bump on average of 23%. So we've increased Sunday attendance by 23% from an average of about 450 a weekend to around 580. And we've stayed around that. Now you see there's some weeks where the numbers are way down. That was the week we had, the, we had Hurricane Fiona. And the, the two weeks after that was, was Thanksgiving. So numbers fluctuated a bit there. But we went up 23%. And we're, we're coasting along, we're tickling the, 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 the bottom end of 600. Uh, consistently over the last four weeks, which is wonderful to see 600 people. But to put it in context, this building that we're in right now, 
There's a variety of opinions about how many seats, how many people in this building can actually hold. And uh, some, uh, uh, we saw one estimate that said 600, one estimate that said 540. So we're trying to be conservative and we're going to say, imagine if you can get 500 people in, in, this, in this building, 500 people, which I think is very realistic. You see this next slide, the, 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 the line, the dark line represents the capacity of four masses, four times 500, 2,000. And you see that uh, we're not proportionately filling up a lot of seats. In fact, it represents, you see in this next slide, 18%. We've been at 18% capacity since the beginning of June through till now. On average, on any given weekend, 18% of our seats are occupied, have been occupied. And even if we, we, we continue to almost be at 600 going forward, that still only represents 30%, 30% capacity. Um, you'll see in this next slide the breakdown of mass times that 17% that, uh, of parishioners go to the 4 p.m., 26% uh, go to the 9 a.m., 39%, and this has been the average attendance from September 4th to October 16th, 39% at the 9 a.m., 11 a.m. rather, and 18% at the 7 p.m. And you see in this next slide, it looks like a set of dominoes. You see the kind of the same information presented. And that these, these numbers are, are fairly regular. They're, they're, they're predictable. So where is all this going? Well, some of you already might have a feeling about where this is going. I'm sure in any enterprise uh, that you went about, we, you would be concerned about effectiveness and efficiency. These are, these are important uh, goals to be efficient in what we do, uh, proper use of our resources, our time, our, our volunteer pool, uh, those who serve in ministry, and, and uh, also to be, to be effective. And to be effective, we need to concentrate resources. And to be effective as a church today is not the same as what we needed to be effective 20, 30 years ago. I mean, there was a strategy developed 20, 30 years ago where it was just like, let's, let's uh, have lots of convenient mass times. And so that the more convenience, the more people, and everything will be great, except that that no longer works. And yet we've continued to, to have multiple uh, masses scheduled. The point is that we have too many masses, too many weekend masses. And I'm going to be straight up with you. That's why I've got the aerobics and hell mug, is that I'm here to tell you today about a change, an upcoming change in our mass schedule that we are going to be uh, canceling. Is that the right word? Closing down, for now, one of our mass times. And I want to tell you why that is. Number one, the reason we gather for the Eucharist, did you notice that word, gather? Is that we're called to gather. We're the gathered people, the ecclesia, the ecclesia, are the people called out. It comes from the original Hebrew, Hebrew uh, meaning of the word, where people are called out to, to, to gather together. That's what the word sunagen in Greek means, where we get the word synagogue, to, to come together, to be together. We're called to gather not to scatter. Now over the last couple of weeks, some of you have noticed that uh, as numbers have started to go up, the difference in what mass feels like, especially if you've come to the 9 or, or the 11 o'clock, uh, is actually quite remarkable. People have said, oh, the, the church was full. It's like, well, no, it wasn't. It was only 50% full, but it actually feels full because it feels different because something happens when we gather. There's a difference when we gather. So that's the number one reason is that it's not just about convenience or about, you know, best use of time or resources or energy. There's a theological reason for it. Um, the other reason is, you know, look, it's a question of need. If, if there was a need for four masses, I'd, we'd happily do it, you know, but the point is 18%, I don't think so. And it, see, it's not just about the question of do we have a priest to say mass? It's like, do we have a music ministry? Do we have lectors? Do we have altar servers? Do we have a hospitality ministry? Do we have sacristans? The truth is, we don't have enough. It's very hard to get people to step forward and to serve. No, even if we did, we'd still be looking at this issue because it's bigger than that. But that's a very real issue, is that it's the same people doing the same things over and over and over again. It's not sustainable, folks. It's not sustainable. And, and so the final reason is that we... There is, there is an expenditure of energy that, that we need to be able to put into other things. You know, we can no longer afford to simply be a church that does weekend masses. There's all kinds of other demands on our time and energy. You know, this past week we had, you know, all weekday masses. On Wednesday night we had All Souls, a special mass for All Souls. We had a funeral on Thursday, a funeral on Friday, a funeral on Saturday. We had 
Alpha Friday night, Alpha retreat, we've got adult faith formation, and then we've got four weekend masses, each of which is a considerable production. For a total of 18% of the, seat, the, the, our seating capacity. So here's the thing. We're going to be canceling one of our masses, and um, that mass is going... See, here's the thing. There's no... I know you're, 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 you're just saying, will you just tell us? This was an agonizing decision. It was a process that we slowly went, went through, talked about, discerned, prayed about, discussed, uh, and looked at every option. And, and just, you know, like, how do you make this decision without causing pain? There's going to be some degree of pain. But the Mass that we're going to be uh, ending for now, because down the road, if numbers start going up and we need a fourth Mass, we'll add a fourth Mass. But the, the numbers, the, the mass we're going to be uh, ceasing is the 7 p.m. Sunday evening mass. Okay. Some of you are like, oh, phew, we dodged that bullet. Uh, I don't have to worry about anything. Just do everything as usual. Uh, that's a topic for another day. But I know that some of you, especially who have been, uh, have made a habit of attending Sunday night mass, that this is, this is probably not the most comforting news that, you, that, that you've heard. So the, first of all, I want to... I want to thank you for the commitment you've made, and especially those of you who have served in ministry on Sunday night. And it's, it's, it is with a certain pang because Sunday night has a special flavor to it. Is there's a, you know, with Evan and the music ministry in the last two years, a, a very a, a simplistic beauty to it. Uh, and sometimes it's been incredibly prayerful uh, on, uh, on, on Sunday night. But you know, Sunday night mass at St. Peter's has been a long-standing tradition. I get it. It's, and it is, you know, as I showed the proportions of attendance, similar numbers on Saturday night versus Sunday night. The difference is that on Sunday night, a lot of the people who come to mass are actually not our parishioners. It's more of a, a mass that serves the, the broader city because it's one of, the, one of the last chance masses. And it's not a bad thing. It's just not the best thing. And right now it's not the best thing for us because we can't continue to do everything. It's as simple as that. We can't continue to do everything and we need to in increase our focus on doing fewer things better rather than a mediocre attempt at many things. Now, technically we could go down to two masses. Don't worry, it's not gonna happen. We're gonna go to three. But, but we need to, I think it's the proper time to do this uh, and I think it's the, it's the proper decision right now. So as of Sunday, uh, November something or other, <laughs> I can't remember the date, the first Sunday of Advent is right here. They're, they're putting it right here in the graphic. But the first Sunday of Advent will, will be the first weekend where we will move to three Masses. And you know something? We did the math. If we continue to, to be about 600 people, if we hit the 600 range with three Masses, guess what? Our average uh, seat, seating capacity in use will only still be 40%. We'll still only be at 40%. Uh, but I think we can get momentum and we can grow that 40% to 60, 70%. Here's a challenge. As soon as we hit 80% capacity, we'll start the Sunday night mass again. Deal? Okay, deal. You, you heard it here first. Let's work on that. Let's make that our goal because I believe that uh, the future that lies ahead of us is a future full of life and a future when our church is going to continue to grow and expand, not just with people in pews, but people who are on board with the mission of our parish and ready to take their place in what God is doing in our midst. So thank you very much. And I hope uh, the context that I've provided today uh, is it makes it easier to receive this news and also for the fact that this video was a bit longer than usual. Thanks and God bless.